Let's talk strategy for all of the different formats next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FPT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Monday, March 21st. I am Frank Sample, joined by Scott White. And the way we're going to do this is Scott will give us his one main piece of advice for each of these formats. And we're going to start with rotisserie, which is also known as roto, also known as the standard 5x5 five five format. Scott, your main piece of advice for this one. Now, these main pieces of advice are, are just for this year specifically, not necessarily general advice. Um, but this is kind of general advice. For for roto leagues, I want to get saves. I, I'm not just punting the category, but I want to invest in little in saves as I possibly can. This is kind of going against the current trends where you're seeing the 11 known closers being moved way up draft boards. Well, there are a lot of closers out there. We don't know for sure they're the closers, but we're we're pretty sure they're the guy, at least to start the year. Uh, I'm thinking like Scott Barlow of the Royals, like Giovanni Gallegos of the Cardinals, even somebody like Dylan Floro of the Marlins. And if they do keep that job all year long, the number of saves they're going to give you isn't likely to be that different from the really expensive guys. And, you know, if they don't, then that just means there are new closers emerging off the waiver wire to help you in the category. So as long as you know you're going to keep playing the waiver wire over the course of the season... You don't have to stress that much about saves. So I like to draft three guys who I think are probably going to be the saves leader for their teams. At least that's how it looks like right now. Um, but you know, usually that means drafting them in the mid to late rounds and, and not making a huge investment in it. Next up, head-to-head points. Typically a shallower lineup, at least it is on CBS. You start nine hitters and five starting pitchers and two relief pitchers. Scott, what is your one piece of advice in this format. So this is the format where starting pitchers stand out the most. And part of the reason they do is because uh, lineups are usually just nine hitters, you know, each spot on the diamond plus a utility player. Um, So I do like to load up on pitchers, but specifically the way the, the player pool looks this year I've talked before about how there's a, a resurgent mid middle class at starting pitcher and it, it skews high. So I like to take advantage of that in points leagues. I think the first two rounds, you're talking about the hitters in the first two rounds. They 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 excel more at their positions. They they stand out from the crowd more than the pitchers that go in those first two rounds do. So I, I generally like to take a hitter with my first two picks. But then between picks three through uh, rounds three through ten. I like to get like five starting pitchers uh, because that is just that's where you see a lot of upside at the position and and uh, you know they 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 uh, I, I like their value relative to the hitters at least for that scoring format. Let's talk head to head categories and Scott. This is kind of the wild wild west. It's head to head points and roto kind of combined. You're going up against one opponent, but instead of racking up fantasy points, you know you're building up categories throughout the course of the week. So. What is your yep. main piece of advice in this format? So I, I think if you're going to go after something, you need to go hard after something in this format. It's less, what, what really distinguishes it from Roto Leagues is it's less about balancing the categories than winning as many categories as you can in a given week. And some categories are, are much harder pr- to predict from week to week as compared to over a full season. I think the way stolen bases are right now, there are so few being contributed just around the league that you know you can't you can't really expect to win the category that often if you're just drafting a bunch of like ten to twelve steel guys, right? So I I go after power. I go after home runs. Fill my at least the hitter portion of my lineup with as many home run hitters as I can because. Not only does that mean I'm going to win home runs a bunch of weeks, but in those weeks when I win home runs, there's a very good chance I'm winning RBI, runs, even batting average, because, of course, every home run contributes to those other three categories. So, you know, if I if there happens, if I happen to get one of the early round base stealers, fine. If I happen to get Adalberto Mondesi at a good price, fine, because I know the steals he contributes are going to be a ton all at once, you know. Uh, but for the most part, I'm filling my lineup with sluggers and head-to-head categories. 
Let's wrap up with salary cap drafts. These are also known as auctions, and Scott, they're so fun because you can get any players that you want, 30 seconds or less. How do you attack this one? So the main point I have here is control the end game. Uh, and, and there's a lot of strategy that goes into to auctions, obviously, and salary cap drafts. But controlling the end game is the most important one. You don't want to be that guy who only has a dollar for like eight lineup spots left to fill and every guy you throw out there gets bid up and you just keep having to wait and wait and wait to actually win a guy. You get nobody good. You want to be the guy who's stealing those late rounders from the other people with only a dollar left to spend by jumping in for $2. So I pretty much stop bidding on players once I I get uh, where my max bid is twice or my balance is twice as much as my max bid. I... I, I don't go past two or may, maybe I jump straight to $3 for the guys I really want, but I'm not like, I'm not going anywhere near my net max bid because I want to stretch that money out for as long as I can. All right. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the fantasy baseball today podcast on Spotify, Apple podcast, Stitcher, your smart speakers or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to fantasy baseball today in five. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.